So the last thing that you can do uh, that is essential in regular expressions are spec references. Up to now, when we defined these groups, we always used this question mark colon, but uh, the groups also have another feature if you don't use the question mark colon. So if you just use the curly brackets, then the regular expression engine actually remembers what was matched within these curly brackets, and you can reference back to that content again uh, later on. Typically, a problem is if you want to match polytomes, where you have symmetric uh, words. If you want to write a um, regular expression that detects polytomes, you need to remember what was written at the beginning, right, and match it to what was written at the end. What we can do here is a very simple version of that is that we have an A, so we match an A and we remember that content. Then we expect a space, B space, and then we back reference to the content that was in the first bracket. In this case, it's just an A, right? So that means here we match A, B, A. But of course, we could also make this more, uh, more interesting, right? And say we have a, um, a word character in here, right? And so in this case, we would also match E, B, E. You can do this multiple times. So in the second example, we have A, B, C. So we have three groups. None of them are uh, groups that, can, that with back referencing. And so then you have to, then you can use uh, up to numbers backslash three, backslash two, backslash one to reference uh, to these values. And so the numbering is that the first bracket has to reference backslash one, the second one has to reference backslash two, and the third one has to backslash three. And so just to highlight you again the difference between the question mark colon, so all the question mark colon does is that it does not create a, a back reference. Uh, this doesn't become a number assigned. In this example, if I were to remove the question mark colon, we would need to change this from a one to two, because the first one would uh, be numbered. And so in regular expressions, you actually only have back references up to nine. So um, if you have a crazy regular expression, you're kind of restricted in how many back references you can make. There's also backslash zero um, that you can use that always matches the entire string. So it can, for instance, be useful sometimes in the editor if you want to do a replacement. So let's say I want to replace groups. And so now what I want to replace it with is backslash zero. So now backslash zero matches the entire string. So in this case, it matches groups. And then I can add something, for instance. The equivalent thing would have been here to make groups a um, back referenced group, and then I had to, and then I could use backslash one. I'll stop here with the groups. Let's go back to this first example. And I want to show you again what I did at the beginning. And now you should understand what's going on, except my Vim commands, which are special but um, you should understand the regular expression. I type down here. My task is right, that I want to replace again the indices or in the square brackets. Colon dollar $s backslash v is my uh, uh, Vim stuff. Don't need to care about it. But now comes the exciting part. I want to match first the square bracket. So the square bracket has a special meaning in um, regular expression, but I want to, I mean it literally here. So I use backslash square bracket to match it. And then I have some um, characters that I want to group because I want to swap them later on. I just use a dot here to represent any character and there can be multiple of them. So at the moment I match it all the way to the end, but now I also require that there's going to be a comma in a space in my string. And then I match the second part of that string. So there's again, um, I add a group because I want to match it later on. And at the end, I have a closed square, a bracket. Okay, so now you can see all the indices um, that I'm interested in are now being matched by my regular expressions. And I define two groups with the content that I want to replace. So now this text is removed. And now I can type in what I want to have replaced it with. So I want to have a square, a square bracket. In the replacement, I could add a, a backslash to escape it, but it's actually not necessary uh, here. So I want to have a square bracket. And now I use the group. And now because I want to swap it, I use the back reference from, for the, the second uh, back reference first. And then comma space again. 
and then the first back reference second, and then a closed square bracket. So now I press returned, and now this file was only 20 lines long, but the amount of work is constant for me. So if this file was a thousand line long, it wouldn't have taken me longer. So just uh, to see you again, so we did indeed replace the uh, position of the indices. So uh, one last example, a uh, more real life example. Google has some uh, Python exercises that one uh, can do, and one of them contains baby names. So um, this is a HTML file, essentially with all the baby names that and how popular uh, they were. Simon is 261, so that's not so popular. A very common task, uh, especially if you're working in data science, uh, is uh, you're faced with files like this, and your task is to do some analysis on it, some statistics or whatever. Of course, you don't want to work with this file directly, but you want to extract the relevant information out of that file. This is a task that can be done very, very quickly with our editor alone, so we don't need to write a program. If we know regular expressions and we have a good enough editor, then uh, this is now a task of less than five minutes. The first thing I do is I, I remove all the rubbish at the beginning and the end. Right? So I restrict it to uh, kind of the, um, the interesting content. So now I have these thousand uh, baby names here, but still with a lot of uh, text in between. So now we can use our regular expression knowledge. So I start again my regular expression engine here in Vim. Now let's go. So the first thing that I want to match is the digit here, because that's the rank that I'm interested in. And I want to, I'm going to group that because um, I want to reference it back later on. So I want to have some digits that I want to match. So I use the backslash D plus and then the brackets to group it. And then there is some text in between and then comes the name. But as you can see, the text is always the same length. So uh, uh, one way to do this now is to just specify I have a dot, so any character. And in this case, it, it's exactly nine characters that I want to match next. I don't group that because I'm, I don't want to reference to it uh, later on again. But now comes the name. So um, the name is a set of word characters that I want to group again. So I use backslash v plus, and I close the group. So now we have the name. Now comes again some uh, rubbish that I want, don't want to keep. So nine characters that I'm not interested in. And then now is the girl's names. So um, there's some uh, word characters again that I want to group because I want to keep them. So now if I group the important text that I want to keep because I want to do a replacement. I'm go so if I just did this now and started replacing, I would still have all this remaining rubbish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the rest as well. So the way I do that is I just have some uh, star, dot star, to just match everything at the beginning. A dot start and at the beginning here. Okay, there's some, some more work to do, but let's forget about that for a second. But now we have hopefully the information that we want to capture. So now I can use the back reference. Backslash one was the ranking, backslash two was the man's names, and backslash three were the female names. Okay, and I press return and I've tidied up my file. It's the last step you can replace these guys here with uh, nothing. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope that was helpful. 